Yes, yeah, please chat. Hello, Can you hear me? Hello. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. uh, we can't see your screen, you know. No. You can't see my screen. I can see you. You can see it. Well, I can see you. I can't see the can't screen. See the video. Playing right now. I can hear it, but I can't see it. Hmm. Okay. Uh... Do you see that? I yep. see that now, Doyle. Yep. Okay, so what's the time then? So we go. It's actually ten. Is it? Does anyone get the time? That's yeah, nine minutes. we're uh, one minute, uh, one minute late, but six. So we can start at nine, yeah. Yeah. They'll well, never we know. We have Are you ready as well. So let's start. Then. Is that okay? Yeah.
everybody. Thanks for all your time. This is the Doyle Global Gathering. Um, I've been talking to most of the people all around the world over the last couple of weeks, um, and I really appreciate all the feedback. And so the idea tonight is that we're going to start with capturing the, the Doyle family history. We're going to go and have a bit of folklore, a bit of music, a bit of uh, Irish, and then we'll open it up to get you guys to, to kind of share and to, to meet each other. So I really appreciate your time. We're um, at the moment, I'm looking at this Jacksonville, Florida, North Carolina, Quebec, Vancouver, uh, Baja, ba B A G A, is that Baja, Mexico? That's where I want to be right now. Ontario, Liverpool, Dublin. The guys here are uh, Michael Doyle is in Down. We'll be talking to you shortly. Gagan, God love me, is in Delhi. That's God knows what time it is in the world over there. Uh, Mick Fortune's down in Wexford, and myself, Stephen Tracy, I'm in Dublin here. So we've tried to pull together a nice uh, starting kind of conversation about the Doyles. And we know that you guys um, really want to get some of that, that contextual stuff. But ultimately, uh, we're here to help the, the Doyles come together and connect them to culture in Ireland and, and have a bit of fun along the way. So I'm going to start with uh, myself, Stephen Tracy. Uh, and just if you guys can tell me, can you see that screen? Is that possible? Can you just confirm? Yes, Steve. Yeah, cool, cool. So my name's Stephen Tracy. Um, for my sins, I decided to try and build a whole network of uh, family gatherings all over the world. And it's been fun. It's amazing to hear all the families all over the world wanting the same thing. And um, really what we're trying to do is just to give you guys the tools. Um, so most families, uh, we're talking about a spread of Northern European families to North America. And of course the Doyles we're, we're talking about tonight. Trying to get the time zone right is interesting. That's why we've come up at Sunday, but uh, look, we're open to changes. Um, at the moment, we are looking at Australia um, and Europe on a Saturday morning, and then Americas and Europe and, and the UK and everything on a Sunday evening. And uh, But we're, we're open to, to listen to how to do that even better. So again, tonight, I'll run through what we do in Ireland 101. Michael Doyle is going to talk through the Doyle family history and take some of your questions and answers. Mick Fortune's going to have a, a great celebration of Irish folklore and his, his wife, Aileen Lambert's going to do a couple, a couple of Wexford songs. Noah Buffini Higgs, a little bit of Irish. And we have a message from the mayor of Wexford. And then I'm open, going to open it up for a meet and greet. That's not the end of it. Every week we have the ability for all of the, the Doyle families to come together and we can explain how that works in a minute. So I uh, put together a bit of a TED talk um, recently, and it's up there on TED.com if anyone's interested in understanding what this whole world is about. Um, that image above me, uh, we have about a quarter of a million people on the site every month, and it's all the same thing. You're connected to a place, an ancestral place, and it's really about bringing those families together and then making the connections with the culture and the ancestral land. So it's the same story. It's a lot of fun. Um, what we know about the Global Doyle so far. So there's 204,847 Doyle family members around the world. That's across uh, the US, Ireland, Scotland, Wales, England, South Africa, New Zealand, Australia. So we've been going around the world counting all the censuses. And um, about 50% are in uh, the US. We've also then had on the sites, we've had 11,425 Doyles, believe it or not. Um, and there's so much information on the Doyles now that it's starting to crash our maps. So we're trying to figure out how to kind of uh, get better maps. So you guys can really zoom in and see where there's little clusters. And you'll find that villages suddenly started emigrating. Maybe uh, sons and daughters went over to one particular part of North America or around the world. And they send word back to their cousins and their, their aunts and uncles and brothers and sisters back home. So you'll see little pockets of Doyles all around the world. It's fascinating. Um, I know we've, we've come across an awful lot of Canadian um, Doyles in the last few weeks, which is really interesting. I'm, I'm curious to get about that. And then Newfoundland, they've been on to us. They want more um, representation from Newfoundland. But there seems to be an awful lot of uh, Irish immigrants over there. So second, third generation as well. This is the Doyle map that we look at in 1901. You can see a heavy concentration there in the bottom uh, bottom right. So the southeast of Ireland, that's where Wexford is. And that's why Wexford were good enough to, to sponsor this event uh, tonight. We can talk about that in a minute. We, we look at tribes all over Ireland. Uh, and one of the opportunities is to actually pinpoint some of those landmarks to tell the story of the, the Doyle footprint around Ireland. On the right-hand side of the page, you can well, see that the O'Malley's 
Well, yeah, this is, I can't see your screen. Like, if we can't see your screen, could you please share oh. it again? You know, apologies. Apologies, sorry. Thanks for, for letting me. Um, is that okay? Um, is okay. Yes. Yes. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. So you didn't. So you didn't see any of the other screens, no? Yes. Yeah. No. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. I'll run through it just very, very quickly. That's. Um, sorry, guys. This is the map for all the doiled. It's all on the site. It's all on the, the Doyle family page if you scroll into it. Um, but we we are working on opening up those maps a bit more. I think we've mapped uh, 4.75 million people on about 9,000 families. So it's fascinating stuff. It's now getting too, too much information. Um, so in 1901, we have um, the, the the kind of the heat map of the, um, of the Doyles here. And again, you can see the bottom right, so the southeast of Ireland there. That's where all the, the Doyles were and that they spread out. And Michael can go into greater detail after. The O'Malley Trail here, I just put that up as an example. So what we did with the O'Malley family, they're spread out over Mayo, Galway and Limerick. And we just started getting them to kind of capture some of the landmarks. And it creates a nice little trail um, to see the footprint of the O'Malley's. But of course, these families also have a footprint all over the world as well. Um, so we, we capture that too. On the, uh, let's see, next one. So. On each of the family pages, so we've twelve and a half thousand family pages, and there's the history, obviously, which we want to open up to um, historians, and and as we know more, we can we can capture more history. Interesting, the last couple of years, the the Y DNA tests, which I'm sure some of you guys are involved with, it's getting more and more rich information. We were with the McCarthys the other night, and they were able to get the McCarthy line going back two thousand years using Y DNA. So that's amazing. Um, obviously, we've set up this idea of a family room. So that's a digital space. It's like a Zoom, but it's integrated. So we can have a, we can we can offer more kind of customized tools and controls a bit more. And um, that's for the Doyle. So the Doyles are encouraged to meet. Like I say, if you're an Australian Doyle, you'll be around Saturday morning at nine. Um, that's Irish time. If it's uh, a North American or a European Doyle, we we'd, we're putting the time out of 7 p.m. on a Sunday. Um, we have people starting to talk. Again, we're going to improve that. The type of things that people have asked us to capture, we've been working with the O'Malley's quite closely. Historic photographs, family trees, um, missing ancestors, history questions, genealogy questions, family tree linkages, family stories, famous family members. A lot of that human interest stuff is important as well. Um, my own story, we've 19 butlers in our family and we know like one of them ended up doing quite well and going to dinner with Marilyn Monroe back in the day. So I mean, we always thought little snippets like that are kind of fascinating. It doesn't necessarily have to be the kind of the, the, the traditional uh, war stories and things like that. It can be just the, the human nature, uh, human interest stories and how people have gotten on. So that's what we're encouraging people to capture on the family pages. Dedicated meeting room, like I say, um, previously we have um, opened up the meeting then and we'll do that tonight. So you guys can kind of share and tell, tell each other your stories. So I'm going to open it up now for to Michael Doyle, and uh, Michael, do you want to take it away there in the Michael and the Doyle family history? Okay. Yeah. Uh, thanks very much. Uh, first, uh, name's Michael Doyle. Uh, some of you may know me from Plants and Dynasties, uh, but as you can tell from my surname, this is uh, quite a personal talk for me, and it's uh, great to see so many Doyles, so so many of us in one location. I'm sure historically that might have been a, a cause for concern or other clans nearby, but it's great that we're all here today. So, um, could I get you on the next slide, please, there, Stephen? Yeah, so, uh, as I said, the talks uh, about the Doyle clan, and uh, Stephen has sort of, uh, in the introduction, has said that primarily our focus here today is on the Wexford line, which is in the southwest. Uh, um, but, as you can see, we were spread all over, which leads to the argument of multiple origin points, which I'll go through. Uh, next slide. So the Doyle surname is a very common surname in Ireland, leading to its speculations on its origins. Originally, it was a Doug Gall, um, and it was generally seen as a personal name associated with the Vikings. Although purely Irish in its form and content, Doug Gall, um, it was a personal name of which the surname is a compound of Dove, Dove, uh, black and dark, and Gaul, which was foreigner. And consequently from this, it's often been described as uh, having a Danish origin. Uh, 
Next slide. There are um, many variations found today with multiple origin points in Ireland. Um, the old Irish name Dubgall does appear or does occur as a personal name many times in the early Irish genealogies. Many lines may descend from these people, though it must be stated the surname Doyle is not found in any of the old genealogies which document other prominent families such as the more famous uh, O'Neills and O'Briens and McCarthy's as mentioned there. Um, but there are famous lines such as uh, the ones here on the screen and such as Dub Giller, the son of Brodar, who was king of Idrone, which is now in County Carlo in 850 AD. Next slide. So the southwest of Ireland, such as Wexford, uh, is primarily where the name is found, although we can see that the name can be found in large groups all over. The map you can see here with the large red area in the corner is primarily the area of the historical kingdom of Leinster. And actually the historical kingdom of Leinster seems to follow very closely to that red southwest sort of large blob. Um, I haven't seen any correlation if there's any sort of reason for that outside of um, what we know about history, but it would be interesting to, uh, to dig into that further. Um, but with that location and with the primary spots there, it also adds credence to the Viking origin. Next slide. So for a bit of context, here's a map showing some of the main hubs marked in blue. Uh, the Doyle surname can be found in large numbers, of which some of you may have links to. I myself am linked to the Dundalk line in the north there. Uh, and not far away from there, my family have held a farm since the uh, 1700s, which is rather surprising for a Catholic family in the north to hold a, a farm in, during those times. So as a wee bit of my sort of background is that as those so of any Dundalk line people are out there, then hello, kinsmen. <laughs> um, can I get the next slide? So talking about land, uh, many families would uh, give their name to the land they owned in the medieval era. Uh, and we have records of this from the 12th century. The term Bali, which you'll see on many, if you have ever looked at a map uh, of Ireland and the small townlands, Bali is a, is a term on the front of many of them. Um, uh, so the, as you can see here in, the blow, uh, in blue, on the bottom right there, below Wexford Town, this means uh, Bally Doyle is the settlement or town or land uh, of the Doyles. Um, and we are in luck uh, that there are surviving records that this isn't a recent add-on to this name or recent translation. Um, this early records, we have from 1538 that this is written down as Bally Doyle. So there is a, a, a long history with this name in that area um, specifically. Although by 1538, that's during the middle of the uh, Tudor English King's conquest of Ireland. So the, there weren't any Doyles running that area at the time, but they were still tenant farmers in those areas. So, um, But it still shows us that this is a, an ancestral homeland of ours, this specific area. Um, we can categorically say that our family owned this land or Doyles owned this land. Uh, and it's actually in the Barony of Forth, um, which uh, the land lies, uh, it was actually named after a, a group called uh, the Fortua. And they are described in effect as people belonging to a different stock from that of the rulers of that area. Uh, and they were uh, famous for being allied to the uh, e Barak, which we sort of tie in with Stephen here. Um, old Tracy's tend to descend from from the Obarak, so, um, uh, and they ruled Wexford region until the 8th century, till the uh, Kinsella family or Kinsella McMurrah family, who are primarily made famous for uh, Dumrick McMurrah, who brought the Normans across to Ireland. So a wee bit of a local history there on the uh, sort of uh, politics of the region at the time. Could I get the next slide, please? Uh, in the 9th century, the annals make reference uh, to Danish kings from York in England uh, as uh, distinct from the Norwegians who have be uh, began to be referred to as the Finn Gaul or white foreigners. Um, 
Ragnall E. Emar, uh, a descendant of Ivor the Bolus, if any of you have watched Vikings TV series, probably nothing like that. Um, but he, uh, according to the Irish sources, was called Reed of God, uh, King of the Danes, because he made himself King of Danish Northumbria uh, and of northern parts of England. And he came with a fleet to Waterford with his kinsman Citric, who commanded another fleet uh, in the Leinster borders. And their arrival soon led to conflict with Niall Gundolf, uh, the King of Tara, uh, or sometimes that gets correlated with the High King. Uh, Ragnall died in 920 AD or 921, and is in his obituary, he is called Re Thungal, uh, Rai Thungal and Re Dovgal, King of the Norse and King of the Danes. We have later documents, such as in the 12th century, the manuscript war of the Irish with the foreigners, although primarily a uh, propaganda piece to legitimize the O'Brien's rule and using the Vikings as a common enemy, the manuscript equates the dove with the Danes as it speaks of the Danish black Gentiles or pagans. So this shows the relation with the dove gall where the names coming from its formation. Uh, slide number nine. Dovgal was uh, associated certainly to the Viking towns and Dublin Kingdom. The persistence of the name means that the Irish who moved into the town adopted it without hesitance, without being afraid of being associated to the Vikings residing in that town. And bolstering this hybrid identity, we now know as the Gaul Gael. Um, and it's a mix. These people became Irish and Viking, Viking and Irish. It was a very blended society. Um, and as it, uh, as it says on the slide there, they integrated very well with each other. If you go next slide. But just to break that down, uh, we have Danish and Norwegian associate Norse groups being given identifying markers like dark foreigner or doyle. And we have Irish people moving to these hubs and being given the same sort of uh, title. Uh, in a very basic sense, if I was today to move to Texas, my children would be get that association and they would become Texans, even though I'm Irish, my family's been Irish for so long. Um, they would probably be from outside people looking in, be referred to as Texans. And that's very much what was happening at this time. Irish people are moving in to Dublin, Waterford, Wexford, Viking towns and being associated as Dove Gaul and taking on that title very proudly, um, which would then form the surname that we have today. Um, next slide. So by the time of the Norman invasion, uh, the use of Fingal and Dovgal as identifying markers of ethnic groups, um, or us and them, um, had been dropped by the families and they sort of amalgamated together by the 12th century. And all families with, of Norse descent or associated with them are being referred to as Usman. And they would be pushed out of the towns into the countryside uh, by the influx of Norman, Welsh, Flemish, and English settlers, um, which is why we see when we look at those maps of 1901, large spreads into the countryside outside of, outside of these uh, hubs. Uh, one Norman family, though, in England was called the Doilies, the Oilies even, um, which, when broken down, has, over a period of time, started to be pronounced as Doyle, it was just an emphasis on the E at the end of our name. Um, and this is a French locational name derived from several villages in Normandy. <clears throat> um, next slide. Uh, other branches uh, may descend from the Galaglass lines, a group of Norse Gaelic descended warriors who have been hired to actually stop the Normans advance into Ireland. And Dowell and Doyle were sometimes translated as the same name given that they both come from the name Dovgal, um, or Dougal, or Dowell. Um, this seems to primarily have happened in Ulster, but that doesn't mean that it didn't happen elsewhere, as Galloglass were soldiers for hire, and they became the staple infantry, heavy infantry, for Gaelic and English slash Norman armies uh, later on. Uh, and one of the payments for these soldiers was to give them land. In fact, there's a very famous branch in just north of Wexford of McDonald's who would hold lands in that area. So this proves that there, this translation may have happened to some lines, but primarily this is an 
an, uh, an Ulster thing. Um, so, uh, as we can see, there are multiple uh, routes to the name that come from, uh, that we came from. Most of us, I believe, would be of Norse settlers or the native Irish who settled and intermingled in their territories, marrying, fostering their children, joining their armies and even raiding. Um, but I hope you find the talk interesting on the etymology and the, uh, the way our name formed. But if you have any questions or need me to expand on any more of these areas, please ask away. No. Excellent, Michael. Thank you so much. So I can't see, do we have any questions there or um, do you guys want to think about it and come back to us? We have some chats there. Okay, let's see. Uh, that's all fine. Okay, well, look, we're going to open the conversation up later on and you can ask uh, Michael directly questions. So um, I'm going to hand over now to um, Mick Fortune. Mick, can you just take control there and maybe introduce yourself and how we met and everything? Mick, you're on. You're on uh, mute there. I'm on mute. Can you? Hello, everyone, and can you see my screen? I can yeah. indeed. Yeah, it's great. Great, lovely. Listen, great talk, Michael. Uh, lovely, great information there. Um, just to let you know, I'm here in in County Wexford, and uh, my other half was going to sing a song for you later on. Is actually her mother was a Doyle, and I'd know very well about the Newfoundland connection to the Doyle because I'd spend time out in Newfoundland a good bit, and I'd know that connection. I'd know songs called Johnny Doyle, and I'd know. Bridges and place names named after Doyle's. They only recorded a man there recently uh, out in Newfoundland in July, uh, a place called Doyle's Bridge. So there's no shortage of that connection to Newfoundland if anyone ever wants to give me a shout afterwards. I grew up in this part of Wexford here, and we were always told the kind of heartland of Doyle was up around this part of the county. The Norse or the, the, the Vikings, we were always told, although they settled in Wexford and Arklow, to settle in Cahore and scattered along the coast here as well. So it's absolutely brilliant, Mike, to your talk to, to, to hear that, that information. So it's fa fascinating. I work in the area of folklore, folks, and I work in the area of collecting stories, collecting, recording, and sharing people's stories. And what I've done for you and Stephen and for all you, Stephen, I've prepared uh, just a little few slides to talk to you about uh, particular folklore from Wexford from this time of year. And now in some cases, we can't, like every Irish person will claim everything is from their part of the country, but it's not, there's crossover. But there are very particular things to County Wexford. And I know in particular, what's really interesting is any the people coming in here from, especially from Canada and from, from, from the States, and even from Mexico, I mentioned, you'll see, you'll see some of the stuff that went over from here, directly went over from here and had an influence on your customs and traditions over there. So that's really interesting. What I do, it's an interesting one to even to be talking to you this evening. And who'd have thought we'd be talking? Who'd have thought that our ancestors, when they've left here, left Wexford, left here, would have ever been able to connect back in the way we've connected before? And I suppose thanks to technology, thanks to these things called mobile phones and tablets and computers, we can connect now in a way that we could never connect before. And in my area of work with folklore, customs, belief, I'm joining up dots like new time. You can't believe it, the amount of information that we're putting together and, and bringing pictures together that are like this tribe, uh, tribe 101. So what I do is I collect, record and share folklore and stories and produce content and in the past producing content at a very, very local level. Obviously, naturally here in my home in County Wexford. Uh, Wexford is a really, really interesting county. And if we just even to, to let you go back to the, the, the slide here to look at where Wexford is, it's on the southeast corner of Ireland. And one thing we have to realise is that the waves of movement of people, the waves of customs, the waves of traditions always moved, moved over east, kept moving, moving, move, uh, sorry, moved west, and they came into the eastern part of the country, and in particular into County Wexford. So you will see loads of similarities with our mainland European traditions, but what's really interesting is when we move further west again to the, to the Americas, or when we had to go to Australia, you'll see some of those things traveling as well. So it's a really interesting time in this area of work to see those links. So the rock and roll lifestyle I was living for years was collecting, recording, sharing locally. 
And that's where my content was. That's where it made sense. But one of the really interesting things which has happened, and it's really important in this story, is the advent of social media, the advent of the internet, the advent of connectivity, where we can connect and share. And that's what is exactly what's happening here. So I would use tools like uh, Facebook in particular, Instagram, Facebook in particular, and you share localized content, local stories, and use it for research, you use it for sharing, and building up, building up uh, stories. Uh, one of the things, I suppose, Stephen asked me to prepare the talk for you to look at November, the month of November. And I suppose I can't talk about November because one of our biggest imports came from back from America was the Christmas tree. Now, this isn't a Christmas tree, folks. This is a May bush. And we've just had our Halloween here in Ireland. We're in the month of November. And exactly six months previous to that, we had the 1st of May. Now, our seasons here start, our summer season starts on the 1st of May, and it carries on to our uh, autumn. And then our winter starts on the 1st of November. They're exactly six months apart. And in Ireland, we will find that all our calendar dates actually make sense in where, 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 it, where, where we live and where we are positioned in this time of year. We're in the dark and depths of winter now here in, in our Ireland going into it. And our Christmas traditions and all our tradition makes complete sense but this is a very very strong Wexford tradition you get it in other counties but it's very very strong in, in, in Wexford and it's basically in the first of May people will put up this Christmas this, this tree or a May bush it's actually done in Newfoundland still that's the gas thing it's done in Newfoundland in Canada and basically to put it up to keep bad luck away right now one of the things which we just we just we've just uh, all went through only a couple of weeks ago we went through Halloween and Halloween has to be one of the biggest exports from this part of the world. We, we brought the tradition over to America and, and Halloween was basically, the, in, in here was the, a, a whole festival based around harvest and based around the, the, going into the winter, going into the month of November. And this was the start of it. Um, so it means when you think of Halloween, you'll think of the Halloween, you think of the, the import now or what, what we know from, from I suppose, from, from, from films. But just to even give you, if you're looking in to, to realize where, what the traditions that you would see now, the, 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 the general traditions, where they came from. We just finished our harvest. We went into winter. And on the 31st of October, that was a turning point. And basically, that was a night that, and even all our folklore will tell us here in County Wexford, you don't pick any fruit after that date because that was a date that they said that the fairies went out and uh, they, they spat on them and they, they did worse than that on, on, on the fruit and you wouldn't pick them. So we use certain dates within the year for our lives to make sense. So that was one of them. Halloween was you gathered your fruit and nuts and in the exact same way, which you know from the North American tradition of trick or treating, you would call to your neighbours and you would get fruit and nuts and obviously now candy and sweets and this, this thing. But in Ireland, and especially in rural Ireland here, Kind of rural, rural North Wexford, that was the tradition to get to, to go around. Here was another thing with, with, with Halloween, it was always around feasting, any of our pivotal dates. And I suppose that's why children this day and the age go, go around and collect sweets and nuts and candy and that, all, and, and that which you're all so used to. We would always have it because obviously candy wasn't it wasn't a thing or sweets weren't a thing here but you'd have whatever seasoned vegetables were there and there's a very particular dish for this is the, the Wexford recipe and it's called cannon now you get called cannon in other counties but you won't get the Wexford recipe you won't get parsnips in it and the gas thing is you'll find called cannon over in Newfoundland still and I'm sure and I've come across it before you'll find versions of called cannon with people who've went to North America and still carry on that making of that tradition the idea was it was a very simple food a very simple dish and you put rings in it and money in it it was all about your future now, compared to me, it might not be the most wholesome looking thing, but it's absolutely fantastic. It's like Irish risotto. And that's a, that's a, a Wexford called Canon. Halloween was always around fun and games. It was always a great social side to Halloween and social side about playing games, playing games at the fruits and nuts that you have. Almost also about divining your future. Things like where you would throw chestnuts in the fire and you would pick it. You, you, you'd be trying to figure out if, if the chestnut popped out. You'd give it a name maybe for your a future husband or a future wife. And if it popped out, that meant he was going to leave you or she was going to leave you. So they're all little innocent games that children would play around divining your future and going into the winter. Things you probably know yourselves again and that's the really interesting thing with folk customs and traditions sometimes you will find some of these things you'll actually find identical traditions over in other parts other parts of, of, of the world and we're beginning to join up those dots now here's a classic one where you'd peel an apple and whichever way the apples peel fell you'd actually give your you'd, you'd figure out the name that the man or woman you were going to marry simple games actually when we're dealing with immigration it was an interesting one and in the movement of people from Wexford here this is a game that children would have played here and it was called a plate game and basically you would blind, blindfold a child to spin them around and they would put their hands in these plates and these plates were supposed to divine your future so if you got a ring that meant you're going to get married uh, if you got clay 
you were, it meant you were going to die. But if this one here was full of water. And if you put your hand in water, it meant you were going to emigrate. And it's really interesting in the Irish story that water is the constant. That, that water thing, these things can change no matter where you go in the country. But here in Wexford, water was always the solid thing. And I suppose we're a coastal county. And someone once said to me before, a Wexford man would go to France quicker than he'd go to Turles because we always saw the sea as a place in which to go, an opportunity and where to go and where to travel. One other thing, which is a, a great part of the, the, of, the, of the experience, sometimes we think of the Halloween tradition went to North America and had a huge influence on North America. Absolutely, without doubt, it came from the Irish tradition, almost identical tradition to parts of Newfoundland and, and Prince Edward Island still uh, uh, from ours. This is part of a wider moment tradition that's wider European, but diversion in North America is from us, absolutely 110% from, from, from here. And really interesting, if you look at like, uh, I want to have the map here now of Kevin Danaher's maps of where this tradition of dressing up and house calling was really strong. It was really strong, actually, very similar, of course, Related a lot with the map that Stephen showed you. It was kind of the eastern part of the country, and that's where those waves of traditions kept moving in. So it was always very, very strong here in, in County Wexford. And literally, there was a fantastic social side of it. These, ma ma these might frighten some of you now, whatever I've seen these, but it was a great element of, of uh, dressing up and acting to Egypt, right, in some ways. And you, this always started on Halloween. It started on the 31st of October and carried right through until Lent. And that was when you dressed up. And you call to your neighbours, you call to your neighbours for food, you call to your neighbours for entertainment, and you call to your neighbours for a bit of crack. And it was, that element is very, very strong here. We have a very, very strong moment tradition here in County Wexford, right? And it's what's lovely about it is the, the social side is really, really important. And we just started there, our, our moment tradition basically with the start of Halloween. And now we, 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 it will carry through. And again, you will you know, you'll come to Christmas time when people had a few days off, off work and a, a family gathered, you will have things called the Ren Boys or the Christmas Mummers or the Christmas Fools or the Christmas Oonshocks. Absolutely carbon copies still exist in Newfoundland, by the way. And again, these might frighten some people, but there were a chance, especially in rural areas, to dress up, call to your neighbour, sing, dance and play. Now, this is where they carry out a little ran, a little small bird, whatever. And you'll see people would call, children would call to their neighbours and they'll get sweets and money and drink. Little, 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 little cans of pop and stuff like that. But here's an image from Newfoundland. And the tradition is absolute carbon copy in Newfoundland, right? And in the rural communities in Newfoundland, where the where where actually where the dials and all settled, because this this is very close to where a lot of the dials settled down on uh, Cape St Mary's, down the just down on, on the on the, the Irish Loop, as it's called. Also, in, an interesting thing as well, just to say to you, that dressing up tradition carried on, and very particular here in Wexford, we have a tradition called Guggen. And gug and anyone will know it's a it's it's a it's an Irish term a gug for a googie egg and the really interesting thing that word I know from research that word exists in New Zealand that word exists in families right across the Americas right in in, in Newfoundland and right across England our neighbours in England Scotland and Wales and that went over even terms like as full as a gug or as full as an egg meaning if you too much to drink but here in Wexford the children would dress up the older people always did it and. They would call around to neighbours looking for little eggs at for Easter. Nowadays, children get dressed up and they call around and they get little eggs. But the really interesting thing, and this is back to Michael's talk, sometimes we have to realise we're not alone with our traditions. These are photographs of children in Finland and in Sweden. They do the exact same tradition. So it's funny, sometimes we're beginning to, our worlds are beginning to open up and our blinkers are, 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 come, are coming off us in, in some ways. So it's really interesting to see those layered traditions, those cross-European layered traditions. There's a map of actually of the southeast corner of Ireland. Obviously, Wexford is here. And in Newfoundland, there's the Christmas mummers in Newfoundland. They would call to people's houses. And there's a Christ, there's mummers in Wexford. Identical. Absolutely identical, right? And the American tradition of Halloween came from us and then just changed and twisted and turned in its own little way. And, and just because we kept because because we became more popular. I hope I'm okay for time, Stephen. So interrupt me because I could talk for Ireland with regards to any of this stuff. Oh, uh, it's fascinating and, 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 and terrifying as well. <laughs> Absolutely. I suppose we're, we're, we're in, we're in, uh, one thing, I, I, this, this image actually is quite terrifying for anyone who's watching here. Well, one of the things which we exported and we brought to the world was we brought the, the, the pumpkin, the jack-o'-lantern or the jack-o'-lantern or the jack-o'-lantern, whatever it's been known now, but this idea of carving out a pumpkin that we see all over, all over in North American culture, which is spread now all over the world. This came from here, right? And it had a huge influence from here. Now, our neighbours in the Isle of Man, our neighbours in Scotland, our neighbours in Northern England, they did a version of it as well. But it, it, it went with us. It went with us in the mid-1800s. 
And if you can't, it's for those of you who don't know, this is what we call a turnip. I think some other people call it a swede. And we didn't have pumpkins in Ireland. So what did we do? Instead, we carved out these little things. These are the photographs from North Wexford here in 1992. And children would carry them out with them on Halloween night. There's my own little one with her own little Irish version of, a, your, of what, the, what the North Americans would call a jack-o'-lantern. Now, as you can see, a little bit, they're a little bit scarier now than your, than your little uh, sweet, uh, sweet pumpkins. And again, here it's been done in the Isle of Man. It's actually really interesting to see the waves of that of, of European culture influencing us in Ireland. Um, and I think one thing, I suppose, living on an island is we take things and it lives on longer with us for some, for, for different reasons. That's what's always really, really special about, about, about us. But here is the tradition, it's going out. This is over in Holland for St. Martin's Eve. Bonfires were very actually important at this time of the year because they marked that massive turning point in the year when we went from the autumn into the winter. And if we go exactly six months to the 1st of May, Bialtana, if any of you speaking Irish, Bialtana, the bright fire is, is a suggestion what it means, but it's a reference to Tinna, which is fire in Ireland. And that 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 has always been a big thing. And again, very strong in this part of the country, right? And again, not as strong in other parts of the country where you where you'd imagine it may survive in the West Coast. It's not, it's much, much stronger on this southeastern part of the country. One thing which I I I I, I really love about I, Irish people, I, I've always said about what like a I grew up here, in, born and bred here in County Wexford. We have fantastic customs and traditions, and sometimes we always believed they're somewhere else. And it's, it's a fault of ours where we always believe that it's somewhere else. And I would remember going to talk to my own grandmother as a child, or no, sorry, in later life, and I'd be asking her about something, and I'd ask her, did you believe such and such happened? And she goes, I could have told you that. And I goes, why didn't you tell me? So why would you be interested in that, she'd tell me back. And that was always the case. They didn't value what they had. They didn't value, they, they, and they always believed it was somewhere else. And that, I don't know where that comes from, that mindset comes from. We believe our customs and traditions are somewhere else because we don't do them. But I find when you scratch and just pull back the layers a little bit, you'll see them. And what's absolutely amazing for me in my area of work is when I go to the likes of Newfoundland or Prince Edward Island, and I can see the, uh, the jigsaw pieces just fitting together. And the picture is just so, it's incredible. Here was one thing, again, you get this tradition in Newfoundland, and it's really interesting there's someone from Mexico here, because I, there's a lot of our cross-European traditions around all Halloween and all souls and the day of the dead down in, 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 in northern Spain and Portugal which obviously would, would influence in, in, in Mexican culture and I'm not sure but the, the, the previous cultures was there before the native cultures were there beforehand but for us Halloween night was also about remembering your dead so you had Halloween night and the first of November was all saints night the second of November was all souls night and all souls night and people believed that my own mother believed and my grandmother believed that they believed the dead came back and they believed that the souls of our ancestors came back. And what they would do was they would set the table, they would leave a candle lighting, they would do everything to make those souls welcome. And I suppose that's one of the really strong things I find. I find it very, very strong here in County Wexford is we keep our dead close, we keep our graveyards close, and we keep our, our memories of our people very close. And that's a really important thing. I don't know where historically it's coming from, but it's, it's in us. And even simple things growing up, you'd be always told, don't throw water on all souls night because you'll wet the souls. And that might be an interesting one from any of your listeners here from, from Mexico because of similarities there with, with, with cultural, uh, cultural links as well. And that's the lovely thing about this kind of work. And it's really interesting. I run a page called folklore.ie on Facebook, and I could put up a photograph of that candle. And I guarantee you, I would find someone in America who would say, I, 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 I do that. And I don't, I, it went with their relation to some stage. I could talk for hours about November and stuff. How are we doing for time, Stephen? <laughs> yeah, no, I think we're, 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 we need to get uh, a couple more people in now and stuff, and then I want to do the meet and greet. But, right. um, yeah, I think rutabaga, if I'm not mistaken, that's what they call it in America. The, the, you do, the you do. Star. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, come here. I listen. I, 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 I'll end. I'll, 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 I'll end with this thing in Wexford. There's very. I, I've only come through Halloween with you, and what we move, we, we move it. We, we move into Christmas again. Christmas is a marking of light here. There's so many particular customs and traditions. One of the real strong traditions here, very, very particular to Wexford, on Saint Martin's Eve night. St. Martin's Eve is uh, the 11th of November and no fisherman will go near the sea on that night. No mill wheel will turn on that night. And that you will not find that tradition outside of Arklow. And again, pure Viking areas, 
from Arklow right down to the southeast corner coast of Ireland. That tradition is there. No idea where why and how it began, but that idea is there. It may be tied in when back for any listeners there, our old calendars, there was a shift in the calendars here in Europe and our calendar shifted and the, the plate shifted. So maybe it could be related to that because St. Martin's Night is very big in Holland and Germany still. And obviously our Halloween is really, really huge and part of this here. But listen, I'm going to stop talking. I, could, I, 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 I this area of work is fantastic to be able to share and join up links. I think we've jo we're joining up dots like we've never done before. And I'm going to ask my other half here, she's going to appear any second, because Stephen suggested that we could maybe get a song from County Wexford. And Aileen Lambert is my other half here. And our mother, she'll tell you, is, is a dial. And she'll be proud to tell you that. And she's got a song called Call Cannon. And Call Cannon was that particular dish here, which I'm going to show you now and go back to my slides here. And it was a dish eaten here on Halloween night in here in County Wexford. My mother made it grown up as a child. My grandmother made it up. And anyone that would call to your house, they would be given a big pot of call cannon. And uh, I'm going to hand you over to Lady now, who will hopefully appear and sing that song for you. No. And if you have any questions, you don't feel free, like Michael said, feel free to ask me any questions. And if you just bear with me for one second, and I'll get Alien. Yeah, I'm seriously terrified of all those stories. <laughs> I <It's> scare easily. <laughs> here's here's the a dial for you. No. Drum roll, roll. Hi Aileen, how are you? Hello there, everybody, and well, thanks. Yeah. Thanks so much for joining us. We've heard great uh, things. Delighted to have the opportunity to sing a song for you. Yeah, good delighted. To. Um. I thought I'd just mention, Mick is referring to the fact that my own name is Lambert, that was my father's name, but my mother's a Doyle from Marshallstown here in County Wexford, so right. I believe I'm in good company this evening. <laughs> you are indeed. I'm going to sing a song for you, it's called Carl Cannon, and for those of you that don't know, Carl Cannon is a traditional Irish dinner that um, we'd be very used to having here in Wexford, particularly around Halloween. So the song isn't all about Call Cannon, it's about remembering things from years ago. And uh, one of them being the lovely dinner that Mammy used to make, which was Call Cannon. So I'll give it a go. <laughs> Did you ever eat Call Cannon made with lovely pickled cream? With the greens and scallions mingled like a picture in a dream. Did you ever make a hole on top to hold the melting flake of the creamy flavoured butter that our mothers used to make? Yes, you did, so you did, so did he, and so did I. And the more I think about it, sure, the nearer I am to cry. Oh, weren't them the happy days when troubles we had not? And our mothers make all cannon in the little skillet pot. Did you ever take potato cake and box tea to the school? Tucked underneath your oxter with your books, your slate and rule. And when the teacher wasn't looking, sure a great big bite you take of the creamy flavoured soft and melt and sweet potato cake. Yes, you did, so you did. So did he, and so did I. And the more I think about it, sure, the nearer I am to cry. Oh, weren't them the happy days when troubles we had not? And our mothers make all cannon in the little skillet pot. Did you ever go a courting, boys, as the evening sun went down? And the sun began to peep and from behind the hill or down. As you wander down the boreen, where the Cluricon was seen, and you whispered loving praises to your little fair Colleen. Yes, you did, so you did. So did he, and so did I. And the more I think about it, sure, the nearer I am to cry. Oh, weren't them the happy days when troubles we had not? And our mothers make all cannon in the little skillet pot. Way! Thank you so much, Thank you very much. Appreciate it. So, in, in, in the song, it's Mammy, that, it's the mother that makes the call cannon. I have to admit that uh, in our house, it's Mick that makes the call cannon. <laughs> and I just, 
I just sing the song, let him get, um, uh, you know, do the hard work over the stone. I, I was down in your beautiful, your beautiful home, your beautiful kitchen. So it, it, it'd be a very nice place. Must must get Mick to make some one down there. Yeah, on the right night. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but he is his, his own mother's recipe. So the, oh, the it's still mammy's, it's still mammy's call. <laughs> Thanks very much, lads. Uh, Alien, thank you so All much. Right. I really appreciate it. You're welcome. What a talented family, Mick. Thanks. <laughs> Well, look, guys, listen, thanks a million. Um, we're going to jump on and do a little bit of language for a few minutes, if that's OK. And um, Noah Buffini Higgs has joined us now. And this time I'm going to ask for a couple of volunteers from around the world. So uh, can we just have is there somebody there from Canada? So we've got Quebec, Vancouver, Ontario. Anybody want to volunteer or else we'll just we'll just pick you. Um, and we've got Florida. Who's in Florida? On my list here. Anne Murray, you're in Florida. Can we bring Anne over? Is she there? And Betty Ann Taylor, she's in North Carolina. Can we get those over, Gagan? Would you bring yeah. those over? And then um, who have we got in Canada? Uh, is Linda Haney there in Canada? She was there, you know, she, she left just now. Okay. Uh, people are running away now because I'm volunteering. Uh, Jocelyn, you're in Quebec. Yes. Yeah. There we are. Guys, if you wouldn't mind, just stick on your cameras. We'd love to see you wherever you are in the world. See if I'll give them access to start their video. Thanks a million. All right. So so Noah is a, a, a world expert. Betty Ann, how are you? Love hey. to see you. Noah is a world expert, I call him now. I found him on CNN, believe it or not. He has been inspiring people all over the world to get a little bit of Irish. And he did the uh, curriculum for um, Duolingo with a couple of other Irish guys. And now there's about, about a million people learning Irish. So we just figured, look, why not? We'll have a few words from with Noah. And would you mind sticking on your camera? We'd love to see you there. And Jocelyn, can you just grab you there? Are they there? Are we running away? There you are, Anne. How are you? I've been talking to all of you all week, actually. So it's really nice to actually put a, a face to the name. And Jocelyn, you're in, uh, where do I say you are? You're in Quebec. Jocelyn, would you mind sticking on your camera? Is that okay? There we yes. go. How are you, Jocelyn? Nice to see you. Okay. But no, I'm French Canadian, you. so you may have a problem with my accent. No way. No, that's going to be the Irish Canadian accent. We'll have a go. Okay. No, I'll hand it over to you. Brilliant. Well, so yeah we won't have any problem with french canadian because we understand two languages here in ireland as well so that's what we're going to be dealing with today thanks to everybody for coming so this is doyle's right this is yeah this is it? Doyle's. doyle's brilliant yeah. out of wexford yeah well mostly other place, but yeah mostly south okay east. southeast beautiful sunny southeast um great so what what i like to do i like i like to keep it really fun because People from Ireland, if you ever approach an Irish person about the Irish language, they're likely to be very negative about it because a lot of people learn it in school. It's not the funnest thing, the way they present it. So I like to keep it really fun and try and keep us feeling sort of real life. So what Stephen and I were dreaming up is we imagine that if you make it back to Ireland and you're visiting the ancestral homeland, say you're down in, I don't know, Kilmuckridge or something, some tiny town somewhere, and you've just gone to the beach. It was lovely. Uh, had a swim. And now, now you want to go for a pint or something. Um, so we'll teach a bit of pleasantries to, to, to learn to, yeah, some, some kind of basics. So let's see. Anne, Murray, Betty Ann Taylor, Jocelyn Coe. Thank you so much for joining us and for, uh, for volunteering. I promise we won't make it too painful. <laughs> <laughs> so imagine, sorry, what was it, Stephen? I said, hope so. Oh, sorry. I thought I, yeah, no, no, we'll, we'll try to keep it all right. Um, so, yeah, you're in some little town uh, wherever you, your family history is from. And of course, it's going to be a pub. So you walk in and the first thing is to greet the people. Maybe it's the bar, the person working at the bar. So I'm going to say the words first because it's great if you can try to get the sounds as much as possible before I show you the text, because in case people read their English intuition. But so I hope everybody sounds OK. When you say hello in Irish, you traditionally say dear wit. 
Dia Dia. Nice. Yes. Everybody jump in like Jocelyn there. Can you hear me okay? She just jumped straight in. Yes, it is. Yes. So, Dia Ruit. <laughs> it looks like something's about to bite you, Betty. Well, I already they call, I called <laughs> and they said there was someone right on their way to your room. Um, can we the and we're yeah, poor Anne. All right. So I'll show you the text now. So so what you say for hello is Dia Ruit, and it means God to you. God be with you. So this sort of looks like on paper. Dia Ruit. Yes, Dia Ruit. Very good. Now. Uh, confirming the Irish stereotype of being pious, but we're also quite polite. So what it's nice to do in Ireland, mm. traditionally at least, is when you're prompted with Diawit, you've just been blessed with God and you want to be so polite that you bless the person back even harder. So you bless them with God and Mary. And that sounds like Dia is Mura Ruit. Dia is Mura Ruit. Yeah, is Mura Ruit. Yes, Jocelyn's a champion. Yeah. Dia <laughs> is Mura Ruit. Yes, absolutely. Brilliant. So maybe we could practice that a little bit before we move on. We're going into the pub. If I uh, if I prompt somebody with Dia Ruit, are you ready to say? Dia is Murrowit back to me. Yeah. <laughs> Grace, Grace. I'm gonna put. I'm gonna. Okay, Jocelyn, we'll start with you because you're so confident. So, Dia Ruit, Jocelyn. Dia you is Muri Ruit. Very good. Yes. Oh. Dia is Murrowit. Oh, okay. Dia is Murrowit. Yes. Oh, excellent. It's excellent. Okay. We'll uh, we'll we'll rope Betty on in in a second. There'll be a different activity just now. So we did. We walked into a pub. Let's remember where we are. So we wa- we walked into the pub. Dias Marovic, or sorry, Dias Dias Marovic. So we want a pint, obviously. So we're going to say Pionta. Pionta is a pint, and mm-hmm. please, you just say what you want and then say please. It's nice and simple. So Pionta ledo hol. Pionta who? Pionta le de hall. Le de hall. Pionta le de hall. Nice. Okay. So Bezian's got her priorities in order because you're speaking up now to order the bites. <laughs> so very good. So yeah, this is what it looks like on paper. Pionta le de hall. Anava. Anava. Great. So, um, okay. So we, we do our Dierwit. We have Dias Morwit. You order a pint. Pionta led the whole. Could you, how about, or, order, order a pint up, Mikael, uh, Bezian? Order a pint. Uh, Pionta is, I'm old, I can't remember. Mm-hmm. That's fine. Pionta <laughs> led the whole. Le whole. Le whole. Le Excellent. Excellent. Okay. Yes. Anova. Anova. Okay. So the pint arrives. And again, it's all very polite, especially in the small towns. People love to be very pleasant with each other. So um, the pint arrives and you don't forget to say, thank you. Go rev ma agot. Go rev ma agot. Go rev ma agot. Well, yeah, that really slid off the tongue. Yeah, excellent. She's with star pupils here. Yeah. Go rev ma agot. That's a bit harder to see. So I hope you guys can see that. Go rev ma agot. Very good. Very good. Okay. Okay. Why do you have four words for one or for two? I don't know. Just keeping your mouth <laughs> fit, I suppose. I what's know. the translation exactly? Go Rev Margaret. What is what's the actual It actually there? it is really sweet. Yeah, yeah. I, I didn't want to be dawdling on all the details, but I, I'm I'd be a bit like the language version of Michael. I, I love all of the details in the background. So go rev Margaret is May you have goodness. Oh. May you have goodness. So the reason things get wordy in Irish is because you're actually kind of quite earnestly, like, in, in sight, or what would you even say, like, invoking things to people. So um, may you have goodness for bringing me that point. Go rev mahagot. Okay. 
Now, maybe the most important, and I want everybody to say this with me, the pint arrives and we are going to toast. And in Ireland, we toast to health. It's lined to. Lined to. Lined to with a long ass. Lined to. Excellent. Yes, brilliant. Sounds great. So um, uh, I only have water, yes, because I need to need to go into work tomorrow. So, uh, but I'll raise I'll raise a drink for people. Will you cheers with me? Schlanter, Schlanter, Anava, Mo, Schlanter, Great, good meal, Magov. You are great so far. Good meal, Magov. Um, all right, and then before we say bye, there's one little thing we wanted to to teach you to to give you an experience of kind of the typical Irish. Uh, when people think of Irish from school, they probably here to think work? a particular okay. phrase. So we need to ask to go to the bathroom because imagine we, we probably drank a few drinks at this stage and we're going to have to ask where the bathroom is. Stephen tells me now I went to an Irish school, so I don't really have a perspective on the pain of Irish in school because I actually quite enjoyed it, as you can tell. But for most poor Irish kids, the one thing you learn is the practicality of needing to excuse yourself. So the toilet or the bathroom is on letters. On letters? On letters. Yes, very good. On letters. And when you ask for permission to do something, so this is going to be what you're seeing into an Irish primary school classroom right here. Imagine shaking in your boots, having to ask. To ask for permission for something is on vuel kiad agum. Do I have permission? On vuel kiad agum. On vuel chad agum. Anava. On vuel kiad agum. Excellent. Okay. So that's the that's the bones of us. But you need to help me out a bit here now because we need to put that into a sentence. And like Jocelyn said, it's true. There's a lot of words. So. We say, on will Cadigum. On will Cadigum. Where go? Dull good G. Dull good G. On letters. On letters. On letters. On a va. I'm going to raise it into the chat here so you can see it because now you're going to have to ask for permission to go to the bathroom. <laughs> We thought this was going to be a good informative thing to teach you. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, guys, ask any Irish person in the world that went to Irish school or normal school and they'll be able to rattle off that question. They will. That's the yeah. one thing people know. I always tell people my, my job back in Ireland and they do a mixture of apologising to me because their Irish isn't as good as they want it to be. And then they'll make a little joke about like, oh, I can, you know, what can I come talk to you later? Thank you, Gagan, again. Yeah, so... So it's written there in the chat if people want to see it. I'll, I'll show it one more time and then and then you have to you have to get yourself out of the room then. So oh no. On will cadagum. On will cadagum. Very good. Dull good tea. Dull good tea. On letters. On letters. Very good. Okay. Okay. All right. Big moment. Maybe somebody can practice. Anybody feel ready? And will Chad a gram day gati date of day gati on letters? Yes, Mahu. Talk you the good Bethian. Go ahead. Yes, Mahu. So you guys are going to you guys are going to be able to survive a good yeah. You will be grand. You will be. You'll put a lot of Irish people to shame with the Irish knowledge you already have now. Actually, um. So Mashiv, guys. So we have we have greeted with all the pleasantries. We've gotten to know a few new friends. We've gotten ourselves a drink, Pionta, led the hull. We've toasted to our health, Slainta. We've gotten ourselves to the bathroom when we need to, because it's a lot of fluid. And um, before we stagger home, let's say goodbye. Mm. So in, in Irish, it's actually quite nice. I'll show you the word first, but there's a lovely background to it. What, what we say in this day and age is Salon. 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 Very good. Slon, yes. Um, this is what it looks like. Slon with a long A. Slon. And 
it's I, I I think it's very nice because it's a shortened version of an older phrase, which again you're invoking stuff quite earnestly to people. It's supposed to mean good day to Slon, may you go safely. Oh. Good day to Slon. And in, in the north, actually, in Ulster and in Donegal, they still say good day to Slon quite frequently. Um so with that, that's a good segue. Gachenia, good meal magus for listening and slon. Slon. Slon live. It's been great to meet the few friends. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Thank All you. right, guys. I tell you what, um, what I'm thinking of doing is if 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 you guys want to meet each other now, we're gonna invite you to just say hello. Um, if the speakers want to say goodbye, I'm going to bring all the family members in and just say hello, if that's all right. Does that suit? Yeah. Yes. Okay, Gagan, so if you just bring in everybody who wants to come yeah. into the chat. I'd, um, I'll stay, especially since okay. I'm a daughter. Well, anyway, so yeah. I might yeah, have definitely. some personal things, that these connections. Exactly, you have the toilet as well. <laughs> but if any of the speakers want to go, I know it's late in some of the parts of the world. Um, feel free. So, Thanks, guys, million, so guys uh, Long, no, guys. thank you so much. I'll talk to you soon. Thanks a million. Gagan, if you bring in people then, we'll say hello. Um, so, guys, the idea is we have created, um, you know, it's funny. I'm having all of these chats with all the Doyles all over the world, and you're all saying the same thing. You want to meet and share. Um, so we've created a, a digital space, a digital family room. The time zones are strange. So, you know, we, we figured out that Sunday night was good for, for, for informal meetups, and we're calling it the, the tea or tequila meet and greets. So you can have an alcohol, you can have a cup of tea, it doesn't really matter, but you can say hello and, and you know, tell your story. Get the, driver, the car license number. Where, who is that then? So if, if you want to, um, who have we got on there? So I'm going through my list of lots of people. There's, um, so Anne, you're in, you're in okay. Jackson. Yeah. Betty okay. Anne, you're in North Carolina. Yes. Jocelyn, you're in Quebec. Yes. Uh, Maureen is in... Vancouver, correct? I was talking to Maureen. Martine is there in Wexford. Uh, Jean, are you here? Jean, Jean Doyle, Jean Doyle. Who have you got? Oh, there's Maureen. How are you? I've been talking to all of you guys all week. Good to see you. So listen, um, it's it's your family. We're here really just to support you and help you and make those connections. Um, Gagan, you might just put the family link in the, the, the chat. So you can see where it goes. Does anybody want to open up? And maybe I'll tell you what, why don't we do this? Just say, tell us where you are in the world. Tell us how many Doyles you're connected. And just maybe a couple of sentences just to tell us a little bit about your story. Do you want to start, Betty Ann? Sure. I'm Betty Ann Taylor. I live in uh, outside of Raleigh in North Carolina. My mom was a Doyle and um, her father emigrated to Lawrence, Massachusetts. Um, and Jocelyn, my father, was from Quebec. So um, oh, yeah. half, and, yep, half and half. Um, so they, my grandfather yeah. immigrated and my great-grandfather and grandmother immigrated and they were all from County Down. Thank so Michael, I appreciate it. Yeah. It, ta it takes yep. about three days. Three you're days. From my, you're from my, they're from my neck of the woods and I find, yeah. uh, if you yeah. ever look up, a place From called Belila seems to be our pocket where the graveyard's just full of doyles, and then we see oh, really? So we've days and called Belila, you, so near. Um, you, so, uh, you, I, I, I will write it down here because I'm not even sure how to spell it, but I'll write it down in the comment section, and you can find it out with all the details of where the church are and stuff. Because uh, it you. seems to be the wee the uh, patient zero of the dying doyles, so. Um, okay. But my family's originally from uh, Bally Barley, which is just outside Boundbridge. Um, Boundbridge, so. the, yes. I, we were from Boundbridge as well. So and, you're uh, both probably connected then, very, you know, wow. we're the same line then. So there's a lot of farmers oh. still there with Doyle's. And, yes, so. they were farmers. He was a farmer. Yeah. Yes. So, oh, I'll, interesting. I'll, I'll send you, you across some stuff and, uh, and okay. uh, see if, I, if any of it can sort of resonate with you. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Actually, I do have um, Stephen. I don't mind. I do have a lot of photos in uh, South Down to Newry and stuff like that of Doyle gravestones, um, oh, all look, in the look Catholic. Them up on the Doyle page, Michael. Yes, I will. The um, they're all Catholic, unfortunately, because I was looking at my own line, and we're a Catholic family. Yeah. Uh, so, if there's any Presbyterians or 
uh, Anglican, I'm sorry I didn't do those churches, but I have they all were the, and you're the Catholic parents. I they were Catholic. I put them up yeah. on the Doyle, the Doyle thing. Wonderful, just, thank you so much. Yep. Excellent. Can I come in just with that as well, Stephen? Sorry, just, just to let you know, the North Wexford Historical Society have digitized oh, yeah. all, most of the graveyards in Wexford and they're word searchable. Oh, so if sure. you're looking for dials, they will identify the graveyards and in some cases the photographs. Um, so the North Wexford Historical Society, if you do Google and go into their graveyards, they've done a lot of work on that as well. So that might be of interest to some of you with that Wexford connection. Excellent. Um, Jocelyn, do you want to say a few words for your connection then? Yes, uh, my father's mother was a Doyle. Uh, oh, my third great grandfather came from uh, Tagman. Is that how you pronounce it? T H H. Timon. Timon. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, they immigrated in uh, eighteen thirty nine or forty to Quebec. Mm. Uh, the whole family, but they were not like the kids were not young kids. Uh, some of them were in their twenties, and yeah. so when I did my research, I found out four baptismal records in Tugman and mm. but I could never found the first born baptismal record and I cannot find the marriage record for uh, James Doyle and Anne Hall so okay. I don't know exactly if that's if Tugman is where we are from or if we're from another town clo close by I have no clue I couldn't find anything. I know that he was a Catholic and she was Protestant. So I don't even know under which religion they married. Because when they came here, he continued to practice Catholic and she continued to practice Protestant. So we're going to have a group, Jocelyn, um, probably on Fridays. We're going to get a, a genealogist who teaches how to do your research. That might be of interest. And uh, I'm just thinking about 18, 1800, what did you say, 43, 1843? No, 1839, because yes. he bought, James bought a land in Quebec in uh, January in 1840. So he must have come by 39. Yeah, that was coming up to the famine, right? That was 1840, yeah. when did that, 1845 yeah. kind of time frame. Yeah, things yeah. were not going well through wise. Um, if sorry, Stephen, if you want, if uh, if you'd like to look at the National Library, the parish records in Ireland, they will be of use to you. For uh, there's a lot of families of dials in Timon still, and um, because the man who worked in our house here, he was a dial from near Timon. It's, it, it, it's no surprise to find dials there. Um, I would have recorded dials in Timon, so it's a it's a it's a it's a it's a quite a, a popular name there. So the parish yeah. record on the NLI website. I just put it into the chat there. That's a great resource there. Um, and one of the great things, I know Stephen as well, whatever, I find that the likes of there's fantastic local Facebook groups of people will help people out. I find that's the great the world we're living in now. It's amazing, yeah. really, you know, that we can connect like this. It's incredible. And at Wexford, they're, they're great people here. They're good people. So they'll help you it's, out if they can. It, it's so bad because I went to Ireland five years ago, but I didn't have all that knowledge. So I didn't go to Wexford, but I was like 30 miles away from there. Yeah. Oh, and pretty, yeah. I missed it. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, I'm we'll, gonna go we'll, back. We'll set up the groups and we'll um we'll get we we'll make sure you're you're connected in with all the people with the knowledge. Uh, Maureen Sanders, do you want to say hello? Tell us a little yeah. bit about your story. Yeah. Uh, so I'm Maureen. Uh, is my camera on? Can't yeah. see it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Maureen Sanders, maiden name Doyle. I was born in England. Uh, both parents are Irish. Uh, they came over just when they were married and. We were all born in, in England. Uh, my dad's from Irish Street in Escorthy, a hotbed of revolution. Uh, my mom's from Raheen Camolan up in the North Wexford Mountains. Um, I've always been interested in family history, visited Ireland a lot over the years. I was, I'm just back a week, actually. Uh, I'm, especially, I'm very interested in genealogy and especially DNA genealogy. So I've worked a lot with Martina on that. Uh, we've got a, a little group in 
on the FTDNA, that's Family Tree DNA website, uh, that uh, was focused on Doyle's to begin with, but it's more broadly Wexford now. So Martina and I have worked together a lot, and uh, we actually discovered our own third cousin relationship through, through the DNA. We knew we were related, but we didn't know how. And so we figured that out through the DNA. So that's a big interest of mine and, you know, the history of Wexford and so on more generally. And Maureen, does it help? Because we've had, we had the McCarthy's on um, a couple of weeks ago and we've come across some world experts in Y-DNA. Does it help if we introduce those experts into, the, into your uh, DNA group? Does that help? Just yeah, I mean, we do, we do have a lot of people in the group do Y-DNA. I've done mm -hmm. Y-DNA and it turns out my, it's not mine, it's my brother's Y-DNA is very unusual for Wexford. They mm -hmm. have no other matches right now. So we're not oh. quite sure where it comes from. Well, uh, I know that yeah, it, help, it helps you with the deep roots, the Y-DNA. Yeah, know... Autosomal the... connects the cousins, but the Y connects you, yeah. you know, more recently. So the McCarthy's, Nigel McCarthy, who I don't know if you come across him, he's an expert in based out of London there. And he was saying that he wanted more locals on the ground to do the Y-DNA because that helps you connect the yeah. global family with, yeah, okay. Yeah, love, love to get more of those. Great, excellent. And, and passing Martina. on to cousin then, Martina, second second or third cousin, as if we worked it out. The third cousins. Third cousin, Martina, do you want to say hello? Hi, hi, Maureen. <laughs> Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, no, I myself and Maureen, I, I'm a maiden name is Doyle. Uh, both my parents were Doyle and they were from Wexford. So um, Maureen and myself share great great grandparents, John Doyle, and um, actually his wife was Ming Doyle, so another Doyle. <laughs> so um, that's, I'm here in Wexford in Ballymore. And are we going to say a little bit about the book? You've been doing a little book there. I know it. <laughs> Come on. Yeah, we had a book launch last night and it was a lovely night. Um, Michael was actually there. He launched it first. And Do you want to tell us nice about the book? Well, the book is about Ballymore and it's just about local history, local stories, local organisations. But last night was lovely because the community hasn't been together for quite a while now with COVID. But we had just a nice night of chatting and we had a cup of tea and music and it was just a lovely night. Excellent. And um, um, Marianne, yeah. do you want to say hello? You're you're on mute there. Now where where is Marianne? You're in. Let me guess. Are you talking to Anne? I see Marianne on the on the Anne Murray, in Florida. Uh, no. Oh, sorry, Anne. Anne, you can say hello as well. I know you're in Jacksonville. No, there's a Marianne as well. You're in green. You're on mute. Um, where are we? There. Oh, there you Hello. are. Yeah, how are you? Fine, thank you. I didn't realize I was on mute, sorry. You are in Liverpool um, now. I'm getting that accent. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I was born in Dublin. Um, oh, brilliant. My grandmother, my, my uh, maternal grandmother was born in Wexford. Um, so I have done a bit, quite a bit of research um, to do Doyles. I think our Doyles come from Tamahaggart. But my grandmother was born in Wexford Town in Talbot Street. Um, her father was a Michael Doyle um, and his father was a Garage Doyle. Um, through um, the Ancestry and my heritage websites, I have connected with some cousins in Wexford that I didn't know existed. And I've actually found a cousin that I hadn't seen I was only a child and I didn't know how he was related to me, but just a few weeks ago, I connected with a cousin and he is um, a first cousin twice removed. Wow. But I'm interested in, you know, connecting with Doyles anywhere and I would love to, you know, sort of find more matches of Doyles. Okay, well, look, well, that's what we're going to do. So we have, um, Anne, do you want to say hello? And in, in, I know you're working there, but we'll try and sneak yes, in. Yes, I'm sorry. I have to keep jumping off and on to answer phones. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I have my great uncle, Patrick Rooney, married Bridget Doyle, and they were upstate New York in Steuben County. And her mother was a Kinsella, if that's the correct pronunciation. Kinsella, so when yeah. I saw your future webinars yeah. are going to have them, 
I, I th found it very interesting. I don't know where my Doyles came from in Ireland. Um, it's very challenging because anything I get on this end, there was a Moses Doyle who was the father of Bridget, but I can't find much Moses. I find a lot of Edward. It's, it's, it's very confusing for me. So one of the things we're gonna do is we're gonna um, have a little widget that you can upload whatever you want um, in terms of your connections and, and see if we get any matches with the group. Now there's what, so we have about a hundred doyles on our system already. And what I've noticed even from talking to all of you during the week is just by asking you guys to talk about your own family, you'll see it, 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 it spirals quite, it grows quite quickly. So there was, um, if we have a hundred people on our database, it's probably representative of three or 400 Doyles. And we've already found 11,000, right? So they're, they are, we, are, we, are, we are able to get them just by even shaking the trees. So one of the things we're gonna introduce is a little widget that you can quickly upload your, um, your information in terms of whatever family connections you have. And we'll try and see if we can get some matches even amongst our own little group. I think that'll be fun. We won't reveal any relatives. I think that the rule of thumb is you don't really reveal any relatives for, even though you input them, we won't show anything in the last hundred years. So there'll be nobody- Anyone, live, anyone living. Yeah, living, sorry. That was actually Maureen, you were teaching me that the other day, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> and um, I actually, believe it or not, I have a Kathleen Doyle in, on my side, my great great grandmother in, in Michael um, up the road around Carlo. Uh, Gwyneth, do you want to say a quick hello? Oh, um, let's see. We do this. Isn't it right, Gwyneth? Yes, Gwyneth. Great. And where are Hi. you now in the world? How are I you? am in Laverne, California, is um, East LA, East of LA, nice. uh, be, uh, about uh, 45 minutes from Dodger Stadium. <laughs> I don't nice. know if anyone follows baseball. Um, yes, I'm on here because my mom told me about this. She's yeah. been doing technology for years and she's on this I believe but I've been trying to call her to get the information so mom if you are on this her name's Kathy is, Scott yeah. I can see her there <laughs> you need huh? to join too so you can talk and tell everything um you're on the spot <laughs> Kathleen's in Mexico isn't she <laughs> yes yeah, she is in Mexico nice. uh she um but anyways, I have been to Ireland several times and I know we have Irish grandmothers and grandfathers on both sides. So um, it, it's been really fun to to experience this with her, the genealogy. But um, and I love Zoom. I'm like, yeah. so she's got this program. I go, I want to, you know, what she printed off once and it was like, yay, very long. <laughs> So hopefully we, uh, I'll be able to get more information when she has it up on her, her computer and I can there she zoom is, in. Yeah, I, I, is yeah. that a Christmas tree I see in November 20th? <laughs> Fair play to you. So you're, you're but, live, in, you're from, you're in Mexico at the moment, right? Yes. Wow. We're all, well, I'm Thank jealous. You, my mom. Hi, mom. <laughs> Hi, mom. <laughs> can you hear me? Yeah. Did I get unmuted? I'm good. <laughs> so, Mom, where are our Irish Doyles? <laughs> Mom, you're on the spot now, Kathleen. Tell us about your Doyles. Well, uh, my grandmother, uh, Mary Cecilia Doyle, was born in 1881 in Palmer, Massachusetts. Uh, but her parents arrived from Killarney, uh, um, County of Kerry, yeah. Ireland, uh, in 1880. Michael F. Doyle was her uh, father's name. He was born in 1853, and he died in 1909 in Massachusetts. Uh, his father was Michael Doyle, in parish of Tour. I've actually gone online, and I can't find a parish of Tour. Uh, last yeah, time I still? looked, huh? How do you spell it? What? A parish of what tour? Tour. T O O R. Yeah. The guys know that though. Uh, Michael or, or Mick, do you, you, you know that tour? I do not, but I know many parishes changed their names over gener over generations. So it may be a different name now than what it was uh, in the past. But I have some. Um, I have some. 
old medieval texts and stuff like that. So um, if I find anything on that, I will put it in the Doyle chat. Um, Perfect. Or in the yeah. Doyle group sort of area. So keep an eye out of that for the next day or two. Yeah. I just had a look. I just had a look on online here. There is um just on Luganam.ie, the our place names commission, and there is a townsland called Tour, um in the Dua civil parish in the barony of Kerry. Yeah, so the, it, the townsland is spelled T O O R or on Tour, um and it's in it's in it's in Kerry and it's in the, the, the if you're the D U A G H civil parish D U A G H Dua civil parish. Um, if that's an AUC, it might be. If you look at um, probably Michael will tell you, our, there's a good, a great website called luganim.ie. Mm -hmm. I'll type it in here for you L O G A I N M.ie. Uh, sorry, that's, I spelled it wrong. L O G A I N M.ie. Excuse me. We've got it. Yeah, it's, it's called luganim.ie. It's a great website for parishes and finding place names in Ireland. So I'll leave you with that. Yeah. Thank you. That's great. Funny, Gwyneth, just you're saying about LA Dodgers. I was on a call uh, just the last couple of days now, and it was with Pete O'Malley, who owned the LA Dodgers. His father owned the LA Dodgers, but the Irish already have been owned of those baseball clubs over the years. But look, just guys, I'm conscious of time. Um, we really just want to, to kickstart this. Um, even if you look at your own Doyle connections, we're probably talking, even in just this small group, um, a few hundred people, you know. So what I'd like to do is maybe just send an email out to you and explain how you can maybe just share some of your ancestral links and connections, and then we'll put them all in one place and we'll start to figure it out. Um, it's your family. We're just here to help you. And, and you can see the guys have all that experience. We can point you in the right direction. And we also wanted to give you a little bit of a taste of the culture because we're quite passionate about our, our, our culture and identity and have come a couple of fun different ways to, to live your connection. So if it's OK, I'm going to leave it there for now, but we would we'll come back to you. We'd love to do we'll do maybe a little bit of homework and then we'll have another meeting where we can share a bit more. And we'll probably if you do get a chance to go on to Ireland 101 and um, give us a little bit of that story on that comment section, maybe a couple of photographs, if you have them in your drawers, a couple of the some of the human interest stories that, that Mick Fortune was talking about as well. Let's just get a nice little group of all the different Doyle stories we have. And I've got my own ones I want to share in our in our um, Doyle story. But if it's OK, I'm going to leave it there tonight. It's late, it's late here. I've got to put the kids to bed. <laughs> my own little kids. And uh, it's been an absolute pleasure. I really appreciate everyone's support and help all over the world. It's been very exciting. And, and I'm sorry I had to work through it, but I hope you, you heard some of it. Thank you. Yes, oh, I like, did. Thank you so much. Guys, thank you so much for your time. Right, me. Thanks. Oh. Sloan. Oh. <laughs> Ciao. Cheers. Take care, guys. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hey. <laughs>